So I don't, I'm not going to do such a long-winded review like we did yesterday. We're going to kind of jump right back in. And uh, we're trying to understand the Tzemach Tzedek statement that you have to have Yira Tata before you have Yira Ila. Uh, we're just starting now. Right, so you have to have the lower fear in order to reach the higher fear. Lower fear is achieved by blowing the Elul, blowing the shofar on Elul, and the higher fear is achieved by blowing the shofar in Rosh Hashanah. Right? And we said we have to understand that seems strange because ultimately we blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. This itself should instill a certain measure of fear in us. Why do we? Why do we need to, to have a, a shofar of? If the whole purpose of Elul. Elul Shofar. Actually, one more, one more preface, right? The, the Semachetic said actually two things. One was to, you need to have the Shofar of Elul before the Shofar of Rosh Hashanah. And the second thing he said, which is the important part for now, is that why do you need to blow the Shofar of Elul? Because it brings down the Makif, we said, right? And what's the idea of the Makif? That through this tremendous level of Bittl, right? That through Torah mitzvahs, you can't really necessarily accomplish the Makif because it says, the heavens is my throne and the earth is my footstool and the heavens and the earth represents the Torah and the mitzvahs and they can't hold him, right? Like, build me a house that can hold me. The level of house, we said, was the concept of a makif ha-rechok, this is the very high level of lights. How are you going to hold it if even Torah and mitzvahs can't hold it through this level of bitl? Ani v'nakeruach v'charei b'dvarai, right? In other words, you have to basically humble yourself. So we said that that's why we, we build the shofar of Elul. We were to humble ourselves so that we can bring down the makif of Rosh Hashanah. Then we had the question, right? I d- jumped into it a little early. Why do we need the shofar of Elul in order to do that? We have a shofar already on Rosh Hashanah. And not only do we have a shofar on Rosh Hashanah, which creates bitul, but it's 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 called Yira Ilah. It's a higher level of bitul, right? It's a higher level of fear. So seemingly that's that, that should do it in order to bring down the makif. Why are we saying that you have to go through the shofar of Elul in order to reach this le- level? Right, and then we start to explain the difference between the higher and the lower fear, right? And we said that the the lower fear and the higher fear are also connected with two different types of bittul. One is called the bittul yesh, and one is called the bittul b'metzias, right? So we said the difference between these two levels of bittul, in short, is that bittul yesh, when you nullify your yesh, what is your yesh? It's like your your sense of of uh, independence. I call it. Right, so when so that means that even though you still have, you know, your own interests and your own desires and your own conception about how life should be run, you bittle yourself and you subdue your interest to God and you obey. So we, we, another way of calling this is called hiskafia, right, which is the idea of subjugating yourself, um, and it's it's a high level of bittle. But at the end of the day, there's still you haven't really undone your negative qualities and you're like sort of independence from God you just you just you're just subduing it so it doesn't you don't let let the animal out of the bag so to speak right and so why is it that you can only reach such a level of bittul and not a higher level what's the higher level of bittul bittul the metzias bittul metzias when you act it's, it's, it, it would be something that goes along with the concept of what's called his hapcha right so these are two important term terminology from the zohar Right, his kafia and his habcha is the notion of subjugation and transformation. So if you if if, if you get to the next level of his habcha, is that then you've gone into all the crevices of yourself and you no longer have an independent person who objects from uh, to God's plan, but is just subduing himself for the mission. You actually transform every aspect of yourself, so there's nothing left of you but God's interest. Right? And, it's, and, you're, and, and therefore, you've, it's called a bitl b'metzias. You completely nullify the, the exist, existence of your own independent self. It's been replaced with godliness entirely. So these are two levels of bitl. And it's also, they kind of correspond, he didn't say this in the mind, but they correspond with this concept of hiskafia and hishapcha. Hiskafia, subjugation, hishapcha, complete transformation of self. So, so there's also called, these, these two levels, it's called yira tata and yira ila, Right? the level of fear that you're capable of holding on to when you're in the first stage, which is bitla yesh and iskafia, this is what's called the yira tata, the lower level of fear, which means you're stuck sort of in, 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 like not completely transforming yourself. What is it 
that keeps you in, limited in this way, we said it's the object of your meditation, right? When, and, and you're meditating, first and foremost, on the existence of creation and the enlivening of creation, that God is like making this all the time. It's a very high level thing to think about, right? You can meditate all day long on the reality that this world is not what it seems. It's all godliness. Every little person that comes and speaks to you is not some independent agent. It's just an angel of Hashem, a shliach of Hashem. And you start to see the elukus inside of everything. Really, if a person's going around doing this all day, you're, you're on a high level. And yet, when you meditate in that form, you can only reach what's called the lower level of fear. And what and bitul hayesh, and iskafia, as opposed to the other side of the, of, the, of the picture. And why is that? Because the aspect of godliness that you are meditating on is the aspect of godliness which fills the world, right? It's his greatness that he fills the world. And since when he makes the world, he's, so to speak, having you in mind and making room for you. So when you meditate upon that level of godliness, there's no way to undo the ex very existence of yourself. You're sort of stuck in the picture. And even though you can bend yourself to his will, there's still a yourself that you can't get rid of because he's maintaining it with the light that you're meditating on, the light that fills the world. You get that? Okay. So in order to reach the bitul the Matthias, you have to go beyond that. That's where we're going to take it from inside. Right? So we'll start from um, the page Reish Samich Hey, Os Dalid, one, two, three, four, five, six lines down at the period. Starts right in the beginning of the line. Six lines down. Bitul the Matthias. Right? Okay. And let's take it actually, let's go a little drop higher. I, t I apologize. Four lines down at the end of the line. The Yira Ilah, see that? Four lines down. <laughs> yeah, right after that, at the second period. The Yira Ilah, he made Gdulas of Ramusu Yisbarach. When you're trying to meditate on the, and, and, and achieve the higher fear, this is from a different type of meditation. It's not from how Hashem fills the world. But it's meditating on the realization that Hashem is exalted and beyond all the worlds. And he's above creation. In other words, so in, when you meditate on that, it's, it can lead you to a state of total self nullification because in that place, you don't exist. So you're actually putting yourself in a place which precedes your very existence, in which case you're not stuck with your own existence because you're not meditating on that aspect of Hashem which is maintaining you. You're, aspect in, um, you're meditating on an aspect of Hashem which is, precedes yourself. And therefore you have a shot at Yira Ilah, right? Um, the Kula Kame Kalochashiv, at that level, all that is before him, and there was anything, is considered as not Kalochashiv. The Abitl should be Yira Zu, he bitl Matthias. And if you can attain a bitl from that level of God's reality, it, it is achieving a bitl be Matthias, which means the whole entity that you once were has been entirely replaced, i.e., transformed. It's Habcha. With, with Elukus, and you're like sort of no longer there. It's like a Moshe Rabbeinu. God is speaking out of your mouth. You cease to have a private identity. And that's why we're saying that in order to come to the higher fear, you cannot reach this through your own agency. It has to be sort of bestowed upon you. Because this that's within the power of man, to grasp just through your own human uh, you know, endeavor, which is your, your meditation and like sort of like the best of your human grasp. Who That's always only going to be the godliness which is which is worldly, which is a godliness that Hashem has contracted in order to fit into your mind. If you can meditate on it, which means you can have the faintest idea that it's even there, it must be that it's contracting itself to meet your standard of limitation, right? And therefore, you know, you're dealing with a with a limited light. The the, uh, the, the 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 again the ability of man to grasp godliness through his own meditation is only the godliness which is relative to the world. In order for you to feel, right? We can sit here and talk about the exaltedness of the orange soap, but for you to actually like be like taken by the experience of what's happening in that region of divinity and to feel the exaltedness inside of you, the orient or sof, that it's kind of a contradiction in terms because if you're feeling it, you're not feeling yourself. It's like you, you're, it's feeling you, you could say, right? In order to have a, a, a perception of this, 
which is a light which is beyond and precedes the limitations of the world, it can only be bestowed upon you. As we said yesterday, you know, you, you're climbing from the ladder from below to above. It, you can never sort of like keep on climbing beyond the ladder, right? If you want, if you want something which is which is beyond the ladder, and the ladder represents the ishtalshlus, which means like step by step elevations, which are all within a comparable st- st- uh, distinction from one another, that you can climb, you know, pretty pretty much like till the cows come home. You can always get a little bit higher based on something which you previously understood. You can understand something a little bit more, a little bit more. But if you want to grasp something which is completely beyond understanding, it can't come from the bottom of the ladder. Someone has to bring that down to you and unite it with you from above the ladder. So it has to be from a revelation from above. And that's why the Pasuk says, Hashem commanded us to do all these chukim, right, in order to fear God. Meaning to say, there's a com- the, com- the commandments come from the commander, not from the commandee. Right? So if you want to access, this is what it's called, a revelation from above that's required in order for you to reach this stage. So Hashem has to give you something. You can't bring your tools to Him. And therefore, He commands you with the mitzvahs. And therefore, you can fear Hashem in this higher level. In order to come to the fear of Havaya, which is the higher fear now we're talking about, you cannot get there merely through human invention. Not merely through through meditation uh, 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 of your of your own best efforts. Rock al yidei gilim ilamayla shenim shach al yidei mitzvahs. Only from someone, so to speak, throwing you a rope from above. And what is that rope? It's mitzvahs, right? Because they don't they're not man made and they don't come from here. So if you're all of a sudden in possession of a mitzvah, it's like a life preserver that someone threw you that you can suddenly be elevated into the place where the mitzvahs come from. It's no longer within the, the, the limited dimensions of man. Now we can get back to our point. That the yira of, of Elul is connected with a lower fear, the year of Rosh Hashanah, a higher fear. Why is that? Because in Elul, when the king is in the field, what does it mean the king is in the field? The notion of the king coming into the field is another way of saying that Hashem has taken off his crown, he's taken off his godly robes, meaning he's to say he's showing you an aspect of divinity which is more on your level. Right? If he's in the, in the in the castle and he's got his crown on, he's presenting a level of divinity which is beyond the, top, the, the, the reach of man. So Elul, the idea the king is in the field, we're getting to the, sort of the bottom of this, this mushal, is that there's an extension of godliness which is something which, which is human and graspable. He comes down to our level. So we can meditate on something which is more, more or less relevant to us. And therefore, when you meditate on godliness, which fills the creation, which is the king not in his palace, but in the field, then the fear, which is available to you at that time, right? It's not from a gilu milamayla. It's Hashem is not sort of revealing his awesomeness to you. He's actually concealing his awesome. He took off his crown. He took off his kingly robes, right? And therefore, since the since the revelation that's coming your way is not really a revelation from above, it's rather Hashem. Um, conforming himself to enter into the, the the limitations of your mind, the field, right? And therefore, it's a, a voda al yidei avodas adam that through our own work we have access to that level of divinity. Therefore, the only the highest level of fear that's available is the lower level of fear. For the reasons that we said before, you can't go out of yourself when you're meditating on a divine revelation, which is maintaining you and is responsible for keeping you in existence. Whereas Rosh Hashanah Shamelech Hubehechu Malchus, when Rosh Hashanah Hashem goes into the palace. And he puts his crown back on. He like shows his true self, his awesomeness, his exaltedness from the people, right? Sha'az near Suddenly, because it's Rosh Hashanah, by the way, and Rosh Hashanah is, itself is like a is, is a holy day. It's like a, it's a Shabbos. It's right. It's 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 written in the Torah. It's already like on another level. It's not a regular weekday. There's an, there there is a sort of rope that's thrown from above. And that's why there's this concept of the king back in his palace, because there's some access point to the exaltedness of Hashem, who is beyond creation. 
where he is now presenting himself in a way where he's exalted and separate from the people, not cloaked into the garments of the people and accessible to their minds, but he's revealing his true unfettered nature. And in the analog, what is this analogy referring to? It's a level of divinity that shines and Rosh Hashanah, which is truly beyond creation. Like he is throwing us that rope. And that's why the fear that you can achieve in Rosh Hashanah is suddenly the higher fear. He made that available to you because he is giving you a revelation from above to below. But we have a question. Now, according to what we just said, Rosh Hashanah, it's a holiday. It's like a Shabbos, right? It's written in the Torah. Seemingly, Rosh Hashanah, the day itself, should be enough of a rope from above, a sort of peeking through from the infinite into man's dimension to bring us to the state of Yiri Ilah. Why do we have to additionally blow the shofar in Rosh Hashanah? Why is like the day of Rosh Hashanah not enough? Fellow? Mm-hmm. Even though Rosh Hashanah is the time when Hashem reveals his kingship, his exalted kingship, his, right, we're coronating the king on Rosh Hashanah. That's the whole name of the day, which means the, the, the full glory of the king is out, that part of him which is exalted. Why is there why is there a need for further blowing of the shofar? Means, means this, just the day and the time itself already is sufficient to shine the exaltedness of the orient social of Maile Olamos, which would then be sufficient to bring us to Yiri Ilah. Why do we need the shofar? It's because time itself is a creation. So it's kind of an interesting thing. What he's saying there is that even though you sort of, you know, it, it looks like, like, you know, it's basically space and time together are the confines that Hashem con- contracted himself into in order to sort of put himself into our perception, right? So even though, in time, we do roll around the holier times and less holier times. There's weekdays and there's Shabbos, there's Rosh Hashanah. So seemingly like time itself is has, and I guess you could say the same thing in space, right? There's Chutz La'aretz, there's Eretz Yisrael, there's the Harabais, right? There's the, like, even in space, there's like holier parts of space. And in time, there's holier moments of time. But nonetheless, whether you're dealing with, if you're dealing with just pure space and time, like for example, today, right? You, it, you, it's very, very hard to have necessarily just the experience of holiness just by walking into Jerusalem. Maybe, right? But like, if you don't, if you're not, if it's not connected to something which is like the glory of the mitzvahs in their in their like perfected form, even though Jerusalem is holy, right? Because it's part of, of space and Rosh Hashanah is holy, but because it's part of time, it's still not like enough of a rope. To, to bring you to a state of something which is truly beyond creation. V'lachain, turning the page. Haromus de orin soshim is gale. The Rosh Hashanah mitzad as man de Rosh Hashanah. Therefore, the exaltedness of the orin sof that gets revealed simply because the day of Rosh Hashanah rolls around. Hu shayach le'olmos. That's still something worldly in, in a certain sense. Right? Because it's, it's, it's in the dimension of time is what causes it. And that's already something of like a human comprehension. Where is the revelation of the Orient Sof, which is truly beyond and separated from the world, which means it's, it's a state of godliness before he even thought of creation. That has to be something which is completely beyond time and space. And what is beyond time and space? The mitzvahs. They're Hashem's like holy objects that existed before he created the world. Asher That's what we say. Hashem sanctified us with His mitzvahs. What's the idea of sanctity? Kedusha. Kedusha means havdala. It means a separateness. It means going out of the dimensions of time. And we literally say every time we do a mitzvah, Asher Kedishanu, right? Because with the mitzvahs, we somehow have this access point to the realms of Kedusha, which represents the Orient Sof beyond the world. You're looking for something else. Yeah, what page are we on exactly? Rish Samik Vav. Okay. So, yeah, you got it right there. Rosh Hashanah, now, Rosh Hashanah, the day itself wasn't enough, but since that's why Hashem told us to blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, because blowing of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah is a mitzvah. Rosh Hashanah is a mitzvah. Elul, it's not a mitzvah, right? 
But on Rosh Hashanah, it's a mitzvah. And therefore, Hayira Vacharada Mikola Shofar to Rosh Hashanah, Hayira Ubito Batachlit. And therefore, together with the king in, in, in his palace, and now this rope from above, you have this mitzvah, which comes from beyond creation, which is which is thrown down to us. Now the voice of that shofar, Rosh Hashanah, can in, invest inside of a person in, in extreme bittle, which could lead you to a level of yira ilah, which means you can actually feel something besides yourself, <laughs> right? You can actually have like some like 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 an opening in, in that, that, that the true godliness can be in the place that you are because you are you got all the elements lined up, right? You've done your 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 pre work in Elul. You're, you've reached the holy day of Rosh Hashanah, and most importantly, you've accessed this mitzvah, which can bring down a level of exaltedness of the king. Accordingly, we can explain one more point in this. Which is what we're saying before, that the fear that comes from Elul is merely a lower fear. Because why does the Rosh Hashanah so far bring you to, to such an awesome fear? Here he's saying, guys, we have a chance to get there, especially this group. I'm very excited for the Rosh Hashanah to feel us. What if we just like have a bit of a Metzius going on, right? So the fact that the voice of the shofar can reach you to a bit of a Metzius, Yira Ilah, who mitzad a mitzvah to kiyas shofar? It's because that there's a mitzvah that you're fulfilling of the shofar. The kaven should to kiyas shofar be elul ain't no mitzvah. As I was saying before, since the shofar that we blow in elul is specifically not a mitzvah, mm-hmm. right? No, there's no commandment to blow it. It's a minhag. And we don't make the brach asher kedishanu because we're not being sanctified, i.e., being elevated to a place beyond the world when we do the shofar blowing in Elo because it's not a mitzvah and therefore we don't make such a bracha. Mm-hmm. That's why the extent of fear that can be extended to you from the sound of the shofar in Elo is only a bitla yesh. Right, it's 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 amazing that the shofar actually does this to us. Right, we stand there, we blow the shofar. It's like you know, you read the Ashra, you read Uval Tzio, and you put on your benetan, you blow the shofar. It's like as though these things are just like sort of activities. But what he's saying is like the sound of the shofar, Mamish, affects you in a way where whatever a voter you're trying to do in Elul of this Kabbalah soul and like just taking things on yourself and being like a slave, <coughs> when you hear that sound of the shofar, it, it gives you fear. It puts a fear into you. And it, 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 it like, it, it makes your avoda bishlemos. It's amazing. And that's what we said when this year when, when, when the Rosh Chodesh fell on Shabbos and we couldn't blow the shofar in actuality, and like hear the sound of the shofar on the first day of Rosh, of, of, uh, Rosh Chodesh Elul, then we had to come up with all kinds of eitzes and counsels how you can nonetheless access that very, very crucial Rosh Chodesh El level of fears. It's because the Shabbos will help you out and the Rosh Chodesh together with the Shabbos will help you out, but you have to really meditate on it because you're really missing out not hearing that simple sound. I'm just get, kind of getting excited about this notion myself. The simple sound of the shofar which has a tremendous effect on us, whether we know it or not. But it only has an effect in El of, of creating a bitul hayesh. Hay- I thought, Robert, maybe like when we blow the shofar through hell, there's no mitzvah. So, what does it like shocks all the consciousness at that moment? Like, do they concentrate to anything but that? Right. So, basically, you obviously there's no mitzvah, but a person has, you know, all their emotions, all kinds of thoughts, and that like smashes into it. Yeah. Just there's something like, even like genetically, you know, historically about that sound. It's something like deep, deep inside of our, you know, yeah. of our Jewish consciousness. It's like, at, at it's like brings you to attention, you know. You the know, sound of happens, Mashiach, the great shofar, it's like, it's, it rattles us in some kind of way. You no, know, but then what happens is that at that moment, you're wiping out your yesh. Like, you're not, you're not, like, in that moment, you're not going to eat or you're not going to have some fun time. But you're not actually doing something productive in a way because you're not doing a mitzvah. So it's like iskafia. Okay. And Rosh Hashanah at that single moment. Right. You are doing a mitzvah. So you're like being elevated out of the creation. Right. It's talking about since it's not a mitzvah, it's the lower level of mitzvah versus yes. it is a mitzvah. So right. does that mean that even during the months that aren't Elul, if we blow the shofar, it arouses that, or what's because no, there's no minhag to blow it, right? Um, <laughs> but it's seemingly. <laughs> it's it, it, like what's special about Elul versus any other? Because day there, there is, it's not a mitzvah yeah. to blow, but there's a minhag to blow it, which means that, okay. that which means that basically. 
there, it, it does something special. You know, if there's no minak to do it, then it's like well, you can blow a trumpet also. You can, you know, maybe hear some Miles Davis while you're at it. In other words, it's, it's a musical instrument at that yeah. point. Okay. The idea that, that here it's like it's, 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 it's instilling fears to be a voda of Elul requires it. It's written in the Shulchan Aruch. It's a minak to do it. So it, 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 it's, a, it's part of our divine service is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. You know, the, a, a minhag itself is a certain high level. Mm-hmm. And you're going to see actually when we got, by the time we get to this mimer, that it's very quite possible that the minhag of blowing the shofar might even be higher than the mitzvah of blowing the shofar. But I mean, it's also <laughs> necessary to have fear of Hashem during the rest of the year. Of course. So of course. why can't we just blow the shofar to arouse some of that, like in the middle of... <clears throat> I don't, I, it's, a, it's a concept. And um, there are certain times, certain certain people have customs to blowing the shofar at different different times. Huh. But um, okay, minhag Yisrael Torah, which means the custom of the Jewish people is is Torah itself. And if 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 we didn't bring this custom down with us throughout the ages, that comes to show us that there's there, it doesn't have a utility for our divine service. If mm-hmm. it did, you would have received word from your forefathers that you blow the show for a certain time. Okay. Right? It's, so it, therefore, answer. you might as well just go with Miles. He's better. <laughs> okay. Ela she'avu b'kein yirazu hi hakdama v'achana li'iri la de Rosh Hashanah. Which means that the, even, so this, this, this mere Elul so far, which is only the, the lower fear, nonetheless, we find that it is a necessary requirement and preparation to reach this higher fear, and this is kind of like our question that we're now battling with. Mm-hmm. We got through saying that in order to get the Maki flight, you need the shofar of Elul, right? To reach the bitter. Then we, we asked the question, why? I have the shofar of Rosh Hashanah. And the shofar of Rosh Hashanah itself is a higher fear. And we just got through saying that it reaches to this level of the makif and and and, and it's because it's a mitzvah, whereas Elul is not only a minhag and it doesn't... So, but And yet... We're still stuck with this conversation that in order to get to the higher fear, you need to go first to the lower fear. So you need the Elul shofar in order to get to the Rosh Hashanah shofar. And we don't know why yet, right? Because seemingly the shofar of Rosh Hashanah has got everything going for it, right? Mm-hmm. Seemingly alone, it can bring down this makif. And yet he's saying, no, if, if you if you don't have your shofar of Elul in your pocket and you just rock up to Shulam Rosh Hashanah and hear that shofar, some, unfortunately, it's not going to work for you. Right? You can't just access that higher fear, even though you got all the elements in place, the day, the time, the shofar, the mitzvah, not going to work. Because for some strange reason, this Elul shofar is a necessary requirement, the lower fear before you get to the higher fear. And we have to understand why. Where is uh, David Chaim? Is he in here? Okay, because you were asking me about this question earlier. Yeah. Well, you know what? Next tomorrow we're going to put these tables together. This is like a ridiculous uh, setup of this room. Okay. Anyway, but you were you were asking yesterday about this very question that it, it, he says it from in order to get to the lower fear to the higher fear, you need something in between, don't you? What do you need? Wisdom. All you need is oh, uh, love, oh. right? So <laughs> it's the idea is that it's like it's like a it's like a it's a fear sandwich, right? There's a basic concept. Right, that we always talk about. We talked about it last night. We're going to talk about it tomorrow. We're never going to stop talking about it. These four levels, right? Basically, yud k vav k, which is the four worlds, the four elements, and the you know man, man animal, and plant, and inanimate. There's basically everything's in this in this does design of four, and it, it's connected with the spheros as well, right? Chochmah is the yud, Vina is the hay, za is the vav, and malchus is the final hay, right? So all this. T- t- Slap on another thing into this, and it's what's called the 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 the, the levels of love and fear, right? That you have basically fear, love from the bottom, from from below to above, right? If you're spelling Hashem's name sort of backwards, you have hey, the lower hey is the lower level of fear. The vav is the lower level of love. The hey is the higher level of love, and the yud is the higher level of fear. Wow. Right? So you have two levels of love and fear. And that's basically Yud K is the higher fear and the higher love. Vav K is the higher love. And I'm sorry, the lower love and the lower fear. And we <laughs> learned this from a Pasek, right? It says, Eile Toldos Yitzchak ben Avram, Avram Holid es Yitzchak. Right? In, in Parshas Toldos, what does it say? It says, These are the offspring of 
Yitzchak, the son of Avram, and then turns around and says, Avram begot Yitzchak. What? You just told me that. Yitzchak, the son of Avram. Why do you have to tell me Avram begot Yitzchak in the, the next breath? So there's many different reasons for that. But one of them, Kabbalistically speaking, is because that describes the order of love and fear. It says Yitzchak, Avram, Avram, Yitzchak. Mm. Yitzchak is fear. Avram is love. So it shows you that the, the pattern is from whether really from below to above or below to below. It's like a fear sandwich with two levels of love in between. Right? <laughs> so cool. So the idea is that in order to get to the higher fear, you must first go through two levels of love, right? The Seder Avodah Hu Dechilu Rechimu Rechimu Dechilu. In the words of the Zohar, the order of service is fear, love, love, fear. Right? Fear, lower fear, lower love, higher love, higher fear. Dechilu Arishun Hu Yiratato, the first fear is the lower fear. Lachar is a base dargos berechimu, then you have two levels of love. It's interesting that in Aramaic, the word for love is really rachamim. Um, anyway, so rachimu. Ava zutva ava rabba. That's called the lower love and the bigger love. Lachar is edichilu yira ala. And then finally you get to the higher fear. Umizem move on. And from here it's understood. Dezesh shema yira tata de elu. That this from the lower fear of Elu. You suddenly come to the higher fear of Rosh Hashanah. It must be, you don't just jump there. It's Aide Hakdama Za'ava. You have to find your love in there somewhere. So, Bruch Hashem, thank God, we're Hasidim after all. We've been talking about fear way too much, right? Somehow, for me to get to Elu to Rosh Hashanah, I have to mamish fall in love with Hashem in two levels. The Yesh Levar Zeh Al Pimashukasubulukute Torah. Oh, you're gonna, this, this is where the Rebbe is just like, Shines through from the orange soap, right? He shows you things you never thought you could see in his mashalim of the Hasidus. He says, This is what it says in Lukuti Torah that the Melech who besade who mekabalis kulam besayre panim yafus who mare panim sochos the kulam, right? Going back to that analogy of the altar, which you know, you think of analogy unless you read some Hasidus and realize that every single aspect of an analogy is perfect. Like we were learning last night about this the, 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 the simple story the Friedrich Rebbe was, 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 was telling us about Shabbos with Vorchim and Elul. He's like, it's a sunny day, right? But the weather's changed and you can smell Elul in the air and there's a wind of tshuva. And also the Rebbe says, okay, there's four things here. There's a sunny day, the weather's changed, smell of Elul and winds of tshuva. And they represent the four levels of a shame of light. Like when the Rebbe tells a story, right? It's not just Tom um, that he's telling you something. Thing, there's like it's it's a, a perfect analogy and so how much more so with the king is in the fields one of the most famous analogies in Hasidus right that every little detail of this analogy is exactly aligned to something in Avaris Hashem so now we're seeing that you going out to the field this is the Gira Tata right and then suddenly what happens after you go out into the field it says the king shows you strangely these two different faces one is Saver Panim Yafos which is like a happy countenance and then Panim Sochos, and then like a laughing, joyous face. Like there's two levels of the king's face. Why? Because there's two levels of love that this is referring to. The Panim Yafos, the Panim Sochos, who Ava. Those two like happy faces of the king are, are called, is the idea of love. And the first thing it says in the analogy is that the king receives everyone with a happy countenance. And then the, these two words are also exact in the mushal. The first thing it says is he receives you in happiness. And then it says he shows you a happy face. So those are two different distinct levels of something that's happening from the king. Because receiving something means who's doing the major work? The giver. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, that's why it's called the lower love. Because the lower fear and the lower love is something that's generated from you. Whereas the higher fear and the higher love, we say they have to come from above. And therefore, the second time it says, it says the king receives you because you're doing the giving. And then it says the king shows you because now he's doing the giving because you've reached the higher level of love. Every single word in that analogy is exactly perfect wow. for the mashal, right? Zema or Islam and when and, and when Hashem, when Hashem so that, but nonetheless, we said that all love is really some kind of a revelation from above. Because remember back in the beginning of this month, we said fear is something that's ani, madoti, you're doing it. But love comes from above in general. So even the love where the king is receiving you, he's still giving you something. Even though what he's giving you is accepting your gift, that itself is a gift from the king. He doesn't have to accept you. So the fact that he accepts you itself is something from above to below. 
But then how much more so when he actually shows you, he goes into his vaults and shows you something that he has. He's not just, the gift he's giving you is not just accepting what you're giving him. He's actually giving you something. So there's two levels of love, two levels of gifts from the king. And when the king shows you love, as it says, kamayim apanim lapanim, just like water reflects a face, so too when Hashem shows you happiness, it turn, it puts a smile on your face, and you suddenly are are imbued with a with a feeling of love for Hashem because of His acceptance of you, and how much more so when, of His gift that He shows you. Ava lemelech, and this produces inside of us by the time we get to Rosh Hashanah, and hopefully already a true love of Hashem. And I see it, Baruch Hashem, in this place. You guys are doing an amazing job going into the field, showing up for Seder. And guess what? Everybody's happy. Everybody's like, this guy t- he says, I- time is just going by too fast. Like, slow down. I can't get enough of it. It's, it's a joy. It's not, it's, it's because the king is showing us, Baruch Hashem, he's receiving our, our work and he's showing us his happy faces. Baal pizeh yesh lomar. According to this, we can say that in the details of the altar of his mush, uh, mimer, the, the mushal and the mimer, merumazim dalid in yanim hanal. It's all these four things are clearly shown there. You never knew it until the Rebbe brought it to our attention. But isn't that the glory of the Rebbe? The zeshi yotzim the kras melech lekabel panav. This that you go out to receive the king to, 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 to meet the king in the field. Shaykh liyiru tata. We already said that's lower fear because you're doing the work. You got to, I need to do to. I have to do it. Then the Melech receives and shows you these happy faces. That's two levels of Ruchimu, two levels of love. Panim Yafos, Avazuta, the nice face that he shows you is the lower love. Panim Sochkos, the laughing face that he shows you is Avarab, is the great love. And then the, the Mashal ends when the king gets back to his palace, right? Where that's like the, the, the demonstration of the awesome awe of the Yira Ilah of total bit of Metzias because now you've got the shofar in your hand and you're able to completely <laughs> negate your entire existence, which we're all going to experience together in Rosh Hashanah. Israel Hashem. Moving right along. Okay, covering some ground today, Baruch Hashem. Yesterday was a little bit of a slow day. Mm. Vav. This is where I kind of cut off Israel yesterday because he jumped to the head to the to the end of the mimer. But we're gonna see actually that there's a quality in the Elul, which I hinted to a moment ago, which is even higher, believe it or not, than the Bitul Bamatsiyas of Rosh Hashanah. What we can achieve now, theoretically, we're gonna see is even greater. So he says, even though the, there's two levels of fear, and the Elul fear is, is officially lower. Then the Rosh Hashanah fear, the year of the Elul, he year of Tatava, year of the Rosh Hashanah, he year of Ela, because Elul, of course, is the lower, and Rosh Hashanah is the higher fear. Mikol Makol, Yesh Ma'ila Ma year of the Elul, Ala year of the Rosh Hashanah. There's a greater quality of the fear that we have access to in Elul, even more so than the Bittul B'Metzias year of Ela of Rosh Hashanah. Right, and this is this is like the Hasidic principle that like. You know, someone was asking me, like, I don't know if I should go over there. I should learn over here. I'm like, I'm a little confused. It's like, you should be where you are. Because the or ain't so over the atzmus of us, Kaddish Baruch is now. So it's like, there's no such thing as a preparation for something coming later. If you're an Elul, you have to realize that what the, the materials you have in your hands right this second is greater than Rosh Hashanah. And the bit of Yesh is greater than bit of Metzias. When we get to Rosh Hashanah, we won't say that anymore. <laughs> but when we're when we're here now, then what we have is the divine gift of all gifts that nothing could be greater than. There's, there's like a there's a funny sort of joke, but it's actually it's it's brought down in Hasidus, so it's, it's far from a joke. It's like a deep teaching that whenever you get to a new holiday in Hasidus class, you're in Pesach. It's like Pesach is the greatest time of the year. Like you were saying, let's blow the shofar every day, right? Because once you realize what the shofar is, you want to blow the shofar on Pesach and Shavuos. When you got that shofar, blow it, you know? But no, on Shavuos, there's another thing. On Pesach, there's another thing. But every time you get to a certain holiday, it's the greatest holiday of the year. It's the greatest day that's ever been created. So the Rebbe points this out. He's like, by the way, like, what, didn't we just say this a moment ago? You know? So we said it's not a contradiction and it's not a game. The idea is that we live in time. 
right? And there's a like, there's a way to dial in to the essence of Hashem from exactly where you are. Yes, you can get to the highest levels of divinity and the essence of Hashem from anywhere, but you can't blow the shofar on Pesach. That's not the way in. And so, no, we don't blow the show for the rest of the year, right? It's Elul, the way to tap into the essence of Hashem in Elul's with the shofar, mm-hmm. not in Nisan, right? Because even though Nisan is the greatest day of the year, because there's a matzah in Nisan suddenly, right? It's a different different instrument to get there. Mm-hmm. Okay, anyway, oh. so he says like this, because, because we live in time. Theoretically, we're above time. Yeah, the shofar and the matzah, they're all the same. But because Hashem put us in like a temporal situation, so we have this instant that we have to grasp and elevate to Hashem, and therefore it has its own little gate. It's called the Shar. It's interesting that the Arizal, as soon as, as soon as he walked into Sfat for the first time, he grabbed his partner, you know, Reb Chaim Vital, and he said, Ze Shar HaShamayim, right? Which is really said on Yerushalayim, of course, on the Holy of Holies, Yaakov Vinu said in the Torah, but he said, Ze Shar HaShamayim, he said that Sfat is the Gematria Shar. It's, it's Gematria of gate. So, and that's why if you look in the Arizal Sefer, it's all the Sharim. Right? Wow. The shah of this, the shah of this. He doesn't have chapters, he has gates. Right? And and Sfat is the gate. It's Mamash Zesh Shara Shamay. So so like really in this little spot, you really it's you could be Pesak anytime you want. It could, it could be Shavuas anytime you want. We're in the gate. Anyway, going moving right along. So he says that even though it's only Yira Tata, the lower fear, nonetheless, you can reach. Um, higher levels than even the fear of Rosh Hashanah in Elul. Because that level of bitul and, and self-effacement in Rosh Hashanah, and as we said, why is there such a bitul? Because Hashem is revealing Himself, the exalted Orin Sof, which is anal- analogized by the king in his palace, is out and available. Therefore, it's great, but the year of Abitul as Einam Chidesh. But the but 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 the year of the fear and the bitul that in, in, ensues from that fear, it's not a chidish. What's the idea of a chidish? It's like, of course, there's gonna be an incredible fear. If Hashem like opened up the sky right now and blew the shofar, and you could hear it from one corner of the world to the other, and everyone stopped in attention, of course they're going to stop in attention. Because like Hashem opened up the heavens, you can hear the shofar of Mashiach. So it's not such a big deal it's that, that everyone's going to be in a state of nullification. But if you're going to just go out into the forest and sort of like meditate yourself into like stopping at attention and just realizing the shofar is blowing even when you don't hear it, that's kind of like a chiddish. Like, what's this guy on? You know what I'm saying? In Sfat, you might have to be careful about that. But I'm just saying, like, what, what's going on is that you've you created like a chiddish. No one's making you be bittel. You're deciding to be bittel when the world is just means and ways. The trucks and buses are all going and the noise of the world is happening. And you certainly stop and smell the flowers. That's a chiddish, it's called. It's like a novelty act. Where did you come up with such like an insight that you're going to decide to have fear of God in the midst of this ongoing crazy world? So it's like a novelty. Whereas when Hashem is shining, of course everyone's going to be bottled. You, you look like you want to say something. What is Chidush? Chidush is a novelty. Novelty. Yeah, it's like something like un- unforeseen. Okay. So the, the fear of God on Rosh Hashanah is not unforeseen. Like we said, we've been saying all, all this time, every conservative re- reform, uh, whatever Jew, they're all going to find their way into, into, into the shuls on Rosh Hashanah. Why? Because Bittu is not such a big chiddish. Of course you are. The king is out. There's like an automatic feeling of fear. Of course everyone's going to sort of like come to attention. The Kevin Shakulu Kamek Lochashim, since the light of the Orient Sof is shining, where all before it is not, and that's out. Koshu Kam Me Yosu, who Yosu Kalo, right? And there's a little like kind of play on words here. It's the, the, the line says, Kulo Kame Kalo Chashi, which means all that are before him are considered as not. And the idea is that the more before him you are, the more not you are. The more so the higher you are, the more experience of bitl you feel. The fact that we're in a state of high bitl in Rosh Hashanah, it's because we're found in the king's palace. What do you think? You're going to go to the White House and you're going to like wear your like uh, your, your 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 casual clothes and, and like speak slang? You know what I'm saying? That's you're not. You're gonna you're gonna put on a suit and tie. And you're gonna you're gonna put your best uh, forward because the place calls it out of you. It's not a chiddush. Everybody acts like that there. And he says, this is, for example, 
the type of bitu that you find in Atsilus. Ein beze chiddush. Right, this is a this is a topic of some interest that I'd like to draw out, and um, we're out of time. So let's talk about Atsilus first thing in the morning tomorrow. Okay, shukoyach everyone. This is good. I like that hearing good.